there were a lot of things. Um, I didn't feel like I hardly saw much of Ben Carson. I expected them to question him a little bit more. Right. Um, it felt scripted to me. Well, it, it felt really a little scripted. Was? Yeah, the, the debates, the whole thing. It just felt really scripted. You think they prepped the candidates? No, not just the candidates, but the, the questions. I thought the okay. questions were all really super loaded. And well, they they aimed the questions to get the responses. Right. Uh, to uh, I think for entertainment value. So right. I got gotcha. you. Obviously, that's why uh, Trump got so much. The, the Trump, time. yeah, he got some. Uh, he took some heat last night, right? Yeah. I mean, other candidates got serious questions. He got some uh, some zingers. He just got some attacks, right? But but regardless, of, I mean, maybe he deserves it. I don't know. What do you think? You think he asked asked for it? He has no social graces. Right. He doesn't let any. He doesn't hold anything back. And the comments he made about women. I mean, he's obviously a misogynist. Okay. And I, I think that's not going to go well. Right. You think that's going to hurt but him I'm, with I'm, with the women? Yeah. Okay. I think it okay. is. And I'm just afraid that uh, he's not going to agree not to run on a third party. Right. Unless he's treated res with respect. Oh, man, isn't that – I mean, talking about seniors and health care choices and, uh, you know, just choices in general in a free country, is that a fair system? If I go to the store and I only have two kinds of jelly that I can buy, is that okay? What if, the par what if we limited everybody to two choices in life? Well, the decisions would be easier. Would it? Yes. Sure. But. That's what we maybe should do. We should just have two choices, make like two cars, Chevy, Ford. That's it. No other car dealers allowed, right? Your baby. Nobody can run as a third party, right? We can't have like Toyota or or uh, or, or Chrysler or anything like that, maybe? You know, I'm a capitalist and believe in the free market. System. Free market. You so, believe in laissez-faire yes, economics, do. don't you? Yes, yeah. I do. I, I lean a little bit toward libertarianism sometimes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, thank you for being free and open with your political views. If those listening, that's Hayden Soloway. Hayden, Hayden works with me and helps me do the radio show. Hayden uh, is a force unto herself. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, thanks, Milton, for entertaining us. Just, just piggybacking off the debates last night, talking about choices. You know, seniors had a big focus last night talking about Social Security. Uh, people over 50, you know, concerned with going in, uh, looking at Social Security. I was just reading a Forbes article this morning talking about Social Security. And... Uh, uh, and the debates last night, you know, there's an exchange between Huckabee and Chris Christie last night. Uh, Huckabee was noting that 60 million Americans receive Social Security and are depend on it, dependent on it. A third of those 60, so 20 million Americans, are dependent on Social Security for 90 percent of their income. And it's scheduled at the rate we're going to be bankrupt in 20 years. And the question was, how are we going to protect it? How are we going to protect it? Anybody got any ideas? One of the things that has been suggested is to delay retirement age. Okay. And that that's only going to give you so much <coughs> time, though, because you know at the rate they're finding out. So we need to, to people need to work until they're ninety five years old now. Is that what we're going to do? Well, I came out of retirement. You did, yes, <laughs> you did, do. But, but I, hopefully, I you have fun. You. you have fun work yes, work I with do. me, don't you? I hope you I do. We have a ball. We, yeah. we have a great team, and I am very proud to be working. With sure. You. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, and let's see. So that's one of the strategies is just make it where people essentially, uh, you know, have to work forever. Or what means testing is what uh, what was thrown out last night on stage. Okay. Uh, that's what I think Christy was talking about is I'd means test it. You know, I'd start. You know what means testing is, Milton? Means test. When you means test any benefit, um, you say, okay, what means do you have? What are your means? Have you accumulated assets? What asset level are you at? Do you have a house? What's it worth? Do you have money that you've saved for in retirement? How much? And based on those answers, they talked about means testing my VA benefits. We've heard that come up. In fact, I got a letter from the VA last year asking me. Um, they said it was just routine, but they wanted to know my household income. They wanted to know the assets that I had because I'm a veteran who served during a wartime event. I get VA health care. So the only thing that I can think of and they've talked about this, too. They've started putting us into tiers, okay? 
like some veterans that served during wartime are maybe more serious and deserve more benefits than others, okay? And, and they've also, so means testing would be, okay, if I've worked very hard and become successful and accumulated a few things, then they wouldn't give me the benefits or they'd lower the benefits that they gave me. Same with Social Security. If you work extremely hard during your life in a laissez-faire capitalist system and you do really well, and you, does that person put more into the system or less? Well, it, it's a socialist point of view, and oh, w- and the government. That's a I mean, bad word. Socialist well, point of view. There you go. Do you disagree? I don't disagree when at you, all. I when totally agree with you. You all work hard and do a good job, but some work harder or are more fortunate and have more. So now we can't get it, and the others can. I mean, that's socialism. So essentially, the person that puts the most into the system, into Social Security, into the pot, throws the most in the kitty gets to take the least out of it because they've accumulated some things during their life. Mm-hmm. That just seems fundamentally unfair to me. Unfair to, and unbalanced. You have to give up yours so that somebody else can have it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Doesn't seem fair at all. So that's what they're talking about doing to salvage the system. Let me ask you this. Why would the system be in trouble? Why would Social Security... By the way, I'm Greg Mack. Let me take a pause for a commercial break. I'm Greg Mack. We'll now pause for a commercial break on Big O Country, 1390... W-O-H-S. I'm Greg McIntyre with the Elder Law Report. I've got Hayden Soloway here with me and Milton. Milton is always here making sure the station runs correctly. Um, glad to be here. Call in if you have any questions, 704-482-1390. If you have any questions regarding Social Security, have any comments on the debate last night, any comments on uh, in general that you want to offer, I don't care if they're good, bad, or indifferent. I'll field them, and I'll give you my honest answer back. Uh, and I think I'm a big boy. I think I can handle it. So what we're going to get into talking about here in a second is beat the odds. Don't let the government take it all. That's where we're going with this is do you trust the government? Do you p- trust our politicians? Why is Social Security bankrupt? Why, if you make money and work hard during your life and you put the most into the system, do you start getting means tested and have the inability to take your fair share out of that system? It's wrong, and it shouldn't happen. That was was that politically correct? I don't think I'm politically correct either. I'm going to say what I mean. It depends on which team you're. Playing which team for. I'm playing for? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right. So, so um, why is the system bankrupt? Do you think? Well, hey, do you got any ideas? Well, there never was a lockbox. There never was a what? Thing, there wasn't never, a lock never on was the system. A lockbox. Who's so robbed the system? Lockbox. Did you Social get Social Security's in a lockbox? Did you no. did you take a bunch of money out of that system? Well, I am. You're not, taking not some, your fair, some, but yeah. your fair share, correct? Mm-hmm. That's what I qualify for. The politicians have robbed that system. Yeah. Call it what it is. They've robbed it over the years. Taking it out of the lockbox. Did you? Does anybody, Milton? Do you have a choice to pay Social Security? No. It's taken out of your check. No. You don't have a choice to do that. It's taken out of your check, and a ton of money's dumped in a kitty, that's presided over by our politicians that robbed the kitty. And then you can't take the money out. It's wrong. And who suffers? Seniors suffer. And my fundamental driving force for my practice is to stand up for seniors, to make sure that their assets are protected, and that they have the best health care and other t- and income and control their assets, as many options as possible, in their retirement years and so, in their later years. So you're building them a lot, Fox. Check your I'm going to put the lock on your box. That's what I'm going to do. The box that holds your assets and income, I'm going to build the lock. That's right. I've got tools for the job that can help lock up those assets. That's what we do. That's exactly right. And other things. While I'm at it, I'm going to give a shout out. A say, I'm going to say hello to Glenn and Melinda Reed from Krause. Glenn and Melinda I think they know who you uh, are. Now. Yes, I've known them for years, absolutely. And I was supposed to tell them age isn't anything but a number, okay? Mm-hmm. It's not, right? And I won't say why I'm giving the shout-out, but I promised them I would, okay? Um, and they're regular listeners, Milton, okay. um, and listen all the time. So, so uh, you know, age isn't anything but a number. Why should you start thinking about, hey, Hayden, You've worked hard. You know, you buy a house. At, at some age, what, the prevailing wisdom, the, 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 how about the quest, common question I get all the time? Should I 
go ahead and give my house to my children? Should I give it away? Mm-hmm. Why at a certain age do you shift to start trying to give everything away? Why should you do that? Just so you can avoid some means test the government has set in place for Social Security, which is coming down the road. Trust me, McIntyre Elder Law will have a means testing wing at some point in the near future to help clients protect their assets and still receive their full share of Social Security. I can tell you that right now. Other attorneys that are listening, start getting ready for it, okay? Um, That's where we're going, all right? And that's going to be an entirely different separate practice area for us. I started writing about means testing several years ago. The first newsletter I ever wrote and sent out to clients was about means testing. The entire, like what, it's like a four-page, you know, bifold thing. You say something that's interesting to your clients. You tell them to keep control of the house. That Not just the house. Well, just I didn't mean to interrupt you. I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't mean to trump you. Go ahead. Please continue. No, it's uh, as long as you have control of the assets, then there is a little more respect for you from your children if you can make disposition of those assets and still have control. I say you want leverage, okay? That's you want to keep like leverage, that. right? Mm-hmm. You want to keep leverage and, and you want to keep control of your assets. And I say mama and daddy, I'm sorry, daughter, son and daughter are nicer to mommy and daddy, whether they want to admit it or not, when mommy and daddy have control of all the assets, okay? We all want people we can trust to give our property to, but you want to keep control of that property and only let go of it when the last one of you passes away, last one of the husband and wife. How about that? Well, I've uh, spent 11 years. We have a call, Milton? Yeah. Well, Leonard, you, did she want to finish her? Oh, go I ahead. I spent 11 years I'll working for again. attorneys. Right. And uh, families came in, and the behavior of the children after the parents passed away and the way they treated their parents when their parents no longer controlled their assets was very surprising in some cases. A son like yours and mine, that would never happen, of course. But It's, it's like just, blood in the water to sharks sometimes. Yes. When you add the money in there, it just sometimes people go after it. Right. Let's see now. I'm, no, whoever it was, Greg, they they hung up. They may not have been calling for the show, but if folks do want to call for the show and talk to Greg or Hayden here, our numbers are our regular numbers for contests, swap shop, any any time you call the station, same numbers seven zero four four eight two thirteen ninety. That's in Shelby, Cleveland County, Lincoln County area seven three five eight zero seven one. Cherryville Gaston County area, 435-2844. Feel free to call any number. Let's see if they're... Hello, are you calling to talk to Greg? Yes, sir, okay. Mr. Milton. Hey there, is Big D? That'd be me. Okay, Big D, you're on the air with Greg and All righty, I'm on there now? You're on now. Big D, okay. what's up? Hit me. Oh, yeah. Um, a man is in the hospital. His wife has passed away. Is this a hypothetical or an actual? Yes, uh, yes, yes, it is. I just want to get a little advice. Okay, the man, got, is, got in, you. man is in the hospital. Under, uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, two weeks before he passes away, uh, there's two sons. One son has the has a uh, guy come in, and now there's already a will done, and it's been done for a couple of years. But a man, uh, one of the sons has a. a while you're coming in and, and, do, away? and make another away? will while he's in the hospital and he dies two weeks later. Okay. Does, the, does that will hold up? You know, I've got a lot of questions there. First, is the wife already passed away? The wife's done passed away. Understood. Okay, I'm going to call this my two sons, okay? Yeah. Great show. Or is that my three sons? Mm-hmm. My three sons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that right. was a great show. It was a great show. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so the, the question is, you know, I assume you said lawyer comes in, signs a new will two weeks before the man passes. Does it trump or change the other will, correct? I keep using the word trump this morning. Well, I don't know why that is. So does it trump the other will? Is that your question? Yes. Maybe. Is the man Maybe. competent? Well, see, he's in, he's in duress. He How's is, he under uh, duress? He's dying, and he dies less than probably two weeks later. Okay. Is he on uh, medication? Yes, heavy. Heavy meds. So, yeah. so I think, I mean, you're questioning competence. That's essentially where you're at, okay? You're saying is Yeah, this- he's actually got cancer, and he's taking chemo. 
Yeah, but and, you know, I know plenty of people who who have had cancer or have cancer and are still real. Just because you have cancer doesn't mean you can't make smart or good decisions. Okay. And right? he's in pain, and he's on pain medicine. He's on pain. You know, those things. When I when you start challenging competence, that's what you're talking about. Is you're start, start you're talking about saying, you know, he had some psych meds or some nervous system affecting meds, something that affected his decision-making ability, and he was not competent or capable of making an informed decision at that time. Okay? Well, see, there's two. There's, you have two sons, and what the one son done was had him put everything in his name. Understood. And he can do that? I have two sons. I actually do have two sons. And, yeah. and, and what the one son did is have the other one. Yep, yeah, but the, here's the thing. Of course, they did it, right? It's done, right? In your scenario, it's done. An attorney came in and did that with one of the sons. Does yeah. that make it right? No. Does that make it no. legal? No. It doesn't make it legal either, does it? But here's the caveat to that, and caveat's a great word there. That's what you'd need to go after is file a will caveat suit. If that son goes and tries the new, the new will, tries to probate the new will, and you and you or the the other son, whoever it is in this scenario, has a problem with that will, then you have a legal recourse and remedy. And that remedy under the law is to go and file a the will law. caveat suit at the at the, the courthouse and get get the doctor in, get the nurses in, subpoena yeah. the uh, subpoena the uh, the you know the the go through discoveries, subpoena the. The prescription med chart. What was he on right then? Let's t- let's he hear the testimony to the, of all the. He things. has to go to the courthouse and file another file a suit against it. Against the will. That's correct. It's okay. called a will all caveat. Right. And what you're going to do in that situation? What what the other son, for instance, that's being cut out. Okay. Yeah. What the other son would do that's being cut out is say, "Look, this is wrong. It was wrong because Daddy didn't have his wits about him when he signed this." He did now. Let me tell you what uh, the the law school definition essentially of competency in that situation to sign a will is. I found very radio there. It is um, essentially that you have a moment of clarity or a clear time where you know what you're doing and sign the will. Somebody can sign a new will or legal document even if generally they're out of it if they come back into it you know some people fluctuate back in and out especially people that are going in senility or on medication sometimes they'll be with it sometimes right. they won't so it, right. all those things come into play the real question is and i want to hold and in, incident, incident, and this with, is not me ahead, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but this is someone else and that's why i was trying to uh, sure. find out a little bit on it and, the specific, and try to have some insight on the it. specific question when we target in on a, <clears throat> on a legal problem or issue you want to target it on a specific issue the specific yeah. issue is competence and whether at the time he signed the new will, he knew what he was doing, he was aware of it, he was competent, and he willingly did it. Okay? Yeah. That's the specific issue. Yeah. And if you, but that's you know, something that a lawyer that scenario, could probably tear apart. That is something that does some that someone who handles contested will yeah. and probate cases can yeah. do for you. Okay? Yeah, right. In my Thank opinion, you so much for your uh, advice. Yeah, you want a killer in that situation, by the way, okay? You want yeah. somebody who can come in and has courtroom experience to take care of that, all right? Absolutely, all absolutely. Right. And, you know, the bad thing about it doesn't really have to be that way. It should be uh, both of them together, you know. Yeah, and, and, and it doesn't, and, and if, it doesn't have wor- to be that hey, way. Hey, if we all held hands in perfect harmony, we wouldn't have politics or lawyers. Might be a better That's world. exactly right. All right. Thank I, you so much, I, sir. I, yes, sir. Big Thanks, Dave, please, if, Dave. if he wants to please, stay, well, thank you, Melton. Yeah, if you want to stay online, you can. If you want to hang up, you can. But I found the one thing he said, and I, I wasn't really sure where he, what he meant by that was the word duress. Where, where that? Oh, where very he, good. Yeah, you know, in a in a criminal term, duress it means really somebody's got a gun to your head. Okay, mm-hmm. right. But I think oh, okay. in his term, duress and what he's going to be showing, and that could be a factor. Okay, in determining competence and his. His willingness, that willing, willingly signing the will and knowingly signing the will and signing that document, you're going to try to show that, look, this guy was under duress. That was a factor in him signing, okay? Mm-hmm. And would a judge yeah. listen to that? And is that a valid legal argument or factor? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking, too. I think that's a real legal legal argument there, and I think mm-hmm. that I hope that works for him. All right. Great question, Thank Big you D. So Thank much. you so much. Thank you, Big D. All right. Now, let's see. we got another call coming in here, Greg, if you're ready for another I'm always Question. ready. Are you calling to speak to Greg, please? Hello? Uh, 
Did you call to speak to Greg? This is Nadine Warlick. I believe my birthday was called out. Oh, okay, Nadine. Uh, I'll get with you on that in just, just a little bit later. We're, we're doing a... Uh, Happy lit- birthday, Nadine. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. 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 I'll call, you want me to call you back later? Yeah, just call us later, dear. Okay, thank okay. you. You have any questions about any legal questions? She's gone. <laughs> she hung up. But she's got a birthday coming up. <laughs> that so. is, that's great. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. So, you know, and that goes into my age is nothing but a number thing okay you know just because you have a few more birthdays than i do doesn't mean well at what age let me ask you this milton at what age do i need to give under under the governmental system we live under in the healthcare system we live under at what age do i need to give away all my property no let's see we talk we talk about this sort of 62 to no it's five years something i don't know i don't know <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm shaking my head. I'm, I'm leading. I'm leading. Oh, that's a bad question. I can yeah. ask some tough questions. Yes, I'm you sorry. Can. I'm sorry. But the answer is never, man. Okay. All ever. Right. Never, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah, is there not. a good age when you're supposed to give away all your property? If that's the question, we need to change the, well, the or if that's the answer, then we need to change the question. We need to change yeah. the rules. Um, that's a ridiculous scenario. Yeah. That, the, the people that, and when I was talking about Social Security, You'll see a parallel in long-term care Medicaid there as well, mm-hmm. which is heavily means-tested. Okay? So you get hurt. You get hurt for contributing tons of tax dollars during your life into that system and then having to, and, and paying three times as much to the bank as your house is actually worth. When you borrow $100,000, you don't pay $100,000 back. Mm-hmm. You would pay like two hundred and fifty dollars back mm-hmm. with the interest. And then you have to get it taken away at the end of your life because you needed long-term care and didn't have mm-hmm. enough funds or spent all your funds down at sixty dollars to $100,000 mm-hmm. every year. And then you got to give your house up too mm-hmm. just to get back the money you paid into the system in the first place. Well, it doesn't yeah. have to be it that right. way. It's mm-hmm. not. Prepare. It doesn't have to. If you prepare ahead, if you plan ahead, it can cost pennies, fractions of pennies. on the. What's the Chinese currency? Yen? No, that's Japanese, isn't it? Okay. Japanese the yen? Chinese Does anybody currency? out there know? Uh, it can cost fractions of a yen, right? To uh, <laughs> to fractions of a dollar, all right, whatever we're, we're going under. Um, uh, to to actually plan ahead and protect everything that you have, yeah. okay? Well, let, let me bring this up. We're talking about birthdays. A week from Sunday will be my birthday. Right. I'll be four, uh, 54. The older I get, the more, you know, you start you're a getting, young you're man, getting, yeah, but you're, you're young sorry. Man. Yeah, yeah, but you're getting closer and closer every day. To your to your elder years, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, that's yeah, right. if you don't get hit by a truck, if or you're lucky, you something are. Something major catastrophe happens. That's exactly right. Yeah, but as, as we do get older, and you know, if you haven't put much thought into what's going to happen every day, you're getting just a little bit older, and those fifties will get here on you pretty quick. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't believe I am as old as I am. Okay, I feel like I'm 25, but I've got, you know, I'm a little older. Well, my body doesn't, but my mind, in my I'm, mind, I still feel I'm, like a I'm 20 40, something. I'm 40 this year in my mind. Yeah, that's right. I'm 20 something in my mind. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But there's no reason that I should get to an age. I have these questions from clients all the time. It's one of the main questions. Should I go ahead and give away all my assets right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't believe that that is actually the situation we have put seniors in in this country mm-hmm. where they think about. Should I go ahead and give away all my assets right now but, to my kids? But now I know the answer to that question. You do not have, you to, do not do have to do that. No, you don't. That's you can right. use tools like ladybird deeds, life mm-hmm. estate deeds, and other and trust and mm-hmm. other proper planning tools to control your assets, sometimes not during your life, but even after you're gone, to make sure your grandkids mm-hmm. go to college and that they're well taken we care of. We've got about four minutes, and, and you've, you've mentioned that word since our first very first show. And the very first interview we did with you before we started doing the show, when Sandy and I interviewed you, you mentioned that ladybird deed. Would you? I had never heard that term. I don't know if a lot of our listeners have. I have a lot of people that are interested in that term. Okay, it's really technically called an advanced life estate deed, mm-hmm. Milton. So with a traditional life estate deed, I may put my children down as a grantee, and I reserve a life interest for my wife and myself. We reserve a life interest for ourselves in our home. The problem is, is we give away our power of appointment. Mm -hmm. So in order to convey that property, the kids have to come in and sign that deed for me to sell it Mm -hmm. or for me to grant a deed of trust to the bank to mortgage it. 
With a ladybird deed, you don't. You reserve the right to still mortgage the property 100% yourself without mm-hmm. your kids coming in and signing off on that deed of trust or sell it. You retain total 100% control. Mm-hmm. And under the Medicaid rules for assisted living Medicaid, which is a three-year look-back period, and long-term care Medicaid, which is a five-year look-back period, for them to pay for long-term care or assist with those payments. A ladybird deed or an advanced life estate deed is not looked at under that five-year look-back period. Mm -hmm. It's not taken into account. So what I say is it builds a brick wall of protection around your property right now. Mm -hmm. It's the tool for the job around your your home. That's your lock. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's in your lockbox. And it allows you to control what happens to it 100%. You can still sell it, mortgage it, do whatever you want to with it. Mm -hmm. You can rest assured that it's not going to go back to the government, Mm -hmm. no matter what your health care needs are, and that you're going to keep it in the family. Mm -hmm. I like to think that's because North Carolina is shifting to a more retirement-friendly and senior-friendly state. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's my hope. Mm -hmm. And those are allowable right now under the rules. If you get one right now under the rules and the rules change in the future, which if there's one thing I can promise you is change is constant Mm -hmm. depending on the political party in control Mm -hmm. and the pendulum swings to the left and to the right. Mm -hmm. It's always going to happen. So if you got one now, it would be grandfathered in under the rules Mm -hmm. because it's legal right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's essentially in a nutshell I hope I explained it well. <laughs> what a ladybird deed is, is it protects the property, keeps it in your family. Is that and that could be for any single married, widowed, any anybody really that has a home of their own. It doesn't property. have to be a married couple. Mm-hmm. You could be a single bachelor that was a lone wolf. You're like Lindsey Graham his entire life. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what Lindsey Graham said. Is I'm a lone wolf, right? Um, so 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 uh, yeah, it, you could be that guy. Okay. And it still applies to you. What you worked hard for as a citizen of the United States should not be taken away from you any more than a married couple's or, yeah. you know, or a young person's thing that they worked hard for. So, well, folks, it, it looks like the time's about to run out on us. But uh, before you go, let me tell thoughts. you first, okay? Mm-hmm. And 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 you guys who don't know, listen at home. I was trying to pull Milton into a political conversation, which he will not get will involved not in. <laughs> right? Thirty, 30 right? years on the radio, I'm not <laughs> he going learned. there. Oh, oh, but but people love politics. I, everybody, it's fun. It's fun, and uh, I appreciate you, Milton, for putting up with our political discussion this morning <laughs> and talking about benefits and maybe maybe uh, ways to plan correctly and uh, and talking about reasons why uh, that you know, from my point of view as an elder law attorney dealing with seniors every day that I don't think our system is necessarily set up the way it should be, okay? Mm-hmm. But we try to help as much as possible. Right. Now, question I have, sure. uh, calling the office, still doing the code word? Always. Always. Okay. I love the radio listeners. We have a great group of listeners and fans out there. Um, meet with you every day. Call my office, McIntyre Elder Law, at 123 West Marion Street, as easy as 123 West Marion Street. And Shelby, it's 704 704- the number, the phone number, 704-259-7040, code word radio, okay? Code word radio. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and I'll meet with you for as long as it takes to make sure that you have everything in place that you need to put that lock on your lockbox and, mm-hmm. and protect your hard-earned money and property. And I know you had a ad in the, the last What's Up Shopper. Is it in uh, this uh, go-round? But I know you had a great ad in the last What's Up Shopper. Explain Love writing that. the article. Essentially, it's an article that I write every okay. couple of weeks in the What's Up Shopper. It's about a half-page article. This week, we have got we've, we have in there uh, a long-term care planning workbook that allows you to use our forms to consolidate all your you got to know what you have to make invent- take inventory of what you have and then set your goals. That workbook will help you do that. If you, if you call our office, 704-259-7040, we'll mail you out a planning workbook, okay? Email it to you or mail it out to you. Be glad to do that. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you both, Hayden and Thank Greg. You. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bilton. We All right. It. And we'll be back next time, next Friday. Yes, sir. Right here. Next Friday. Okay. Same time, same Elder place. Elder Law Report. We'll see you then, folks. And join us uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the uh, Community Profile Program uh, in this time slot. We'll see you then. monthly subscription fees. Thank you, thank you. No download fees. Well, thank you. We're keeping radio fee-free. Thank you so much. Big O Country, WHS Shelby, WLON Lincoln, WCSL, Cherubal Gastonia. Hi, I'm Greg